Today I'll be talking about something that's a little controversial, and that's the fact that ceremonial grade matcha is a meaningless term. Whew, feels good to say that. There's a lot to unpack here, so I've made myself a giant bowl of matcha to help me through this, so let's get started. If you've clicked on this video or gone shopping for matcha before, you've definitely come across the term ceremonial grade. In fact, you might have been told to only buy matcha that is ceremonial grade. But the truth of the matter is, this term doesn't really mean anything. And in fact, I think it is reductive, meaningless, and ultimately harmful to a good and nuanced understanding of tea and tea culture. The main reasons why I think this term is ultimately misleading is that 1. It is unregulated and undefined. 2. It ignores the stylistic differences between matcha that is used in the tea room and matcha that is used casually. 3. It ignores the huge range of quality of tea that is used in the tea room. And 4. Is that this term is mostly used by companies that neither engage with, promote, or really understand the cultural and artistic practice that is Chanoyu. So let's start with that first point. The fact that ceremonial grade is unregulated and undefined. Usually in the videos when I bring up a term I like to define it, but with this term there really is no agreed upon definition of what ceremonial grade means. So let's try and break it down and pick it apart. Ceremonial obviously refers to the Japanese tea ceremony or chanoyu or sado or chado depending on what you want to call it. Using ceremonial insinuates that this tea is of a quality to be served in a tea gathering. Using the term grade obviously implies some sort of ranking or grading system where matcha is organized by quality. But truthfully, that doesn't exist. There is no centralized organization in Japan or abroad that sets standards for what can be sold as ceremonial grade, meaning that anyone can slap this label onto whatever tea they want and get away with it. Because every company and person has their own individual standards for taste, because taste is subjective, this term becomes useless when comparing teas from multiple brands. Even in Japan, matcha production, labeling, and marketing isn't really regulated. The only part that is regulated is the production and sale of tencha, the raw material that gets ground into matcha. But this regulation occurs behind the scenes because most consumers don't actually buy tencha, they buy matcha. So to be generous here, what ceremonial grade is trying to say is that the tea is of a suitable quality to be consumed in the traditional manner of using hot water. Usucha, like this. Ooh, that settled a bit. The use of this term likely started when matcha first became popular overseas to distinguish decent quality tea from the absolute rubbish bottom of the barrel matcha that had flooded the market. And while in theory there is a useful distinction to be made here, marking it as a grade belies the fact that there is no such grading system. Additionally, the term ceremonial drags in an association with Chan Yu implying that the tea is of this style that is drunk in the tea ceremony, which may or may not be true depending on the brand of tea. So while we're on that topic, let's talk about what kind of matcha is actually served in a tea ceremony. Almost exclusively, matcha used in the tea room is made from blended tencha, that is, tea from multiple farms or cultivars blended together to create a crafted, nuanced, and consistently reliable flavor profile. This is in contrast to matcha that is popular in casual drinking or among tea enthusiasts, which is often single origin, meaning that the tencha comes from one farm, one cultivar. The preference for blends in the tea room is historical and also helps keep the tea consistent from year to year. If it's a single farm's tea, then the flavor will change with each harvest, but if it's a blend, that blend can be adjusted to keep the taste the same and reliable because when hosting a four hour long tea gathering with multiple servings of tea and kaiseki food and sake and sweets, the last thing you want to worry about is, oh no, is this year's harvest of tea as good as last year's harvest? Additionally, the blended teas used in the tea room always carry a poetic name, such as our utano mori or kiku no sono. Very traditionally, these are actually of the form something no bukashi or something no shiro. Depending on the producer, this can indicate quality or picking time. The use of the poetic name actually has a role in the tea ceremony. When the guests ask about the tea being used, the host will respond with the poetic name. And picking a poetic name that fits the gathering can add to the overall experience. Even though single cultivar and single origin matcha have been growing more and more popular, both in Japan but especially overseas, the blended and poetically named style of matcha is the industry standard in the tea room and across the board in Japan. This is another reason why seeing the term ceremonial grade on a can of single origin matcha can be a little problematic. 
this style of tea would probably not be served traditionally in the tea room, unless you have a really cool avant-garde chajin and then that's cool. But traditionally, not the case. So you might be thinking, if we don't use the term ceremonial grade, how is matcha sold in Japan in a way that lets customers know roughly what quality to expect? Most tea ceremony practitioners, or chajin as we like to call ourselves, usually think of matcha in two basic levels of quality. Lower quality, but still very high quality, tea suitable for usucha, which is what I'm drinking now, or higher quality tea suitable for making koicha, or thick tea. If you don't know what koicha is, you should check out our video on it over here. While standards have changed over the years and vary from company to company, most producers in Japan still blend their teas to fit into these two categories. Occasionally you'll also find teas labeled keiko grade or keiko yo, and this means that they are of a slightly lower quality but still drinkable for making usucha in a practice or lesson setting. This is more affordable when you're serving multiple students in a class and all the students are making their own bowls of tea, compared to a chakai yo or chakai grade usucha, which is what you'd serve at a chakai or tea gathering. Confusingly, all of these use cases and quality levels would be lumped together under the term ceremonial grade, which again makes this term really not that meaningful. You might ask what actually separates these three grades of tea, and the answer is complicated, but it mostly boils down to taste and price, and of course, taste is subjective. In theory, koicha grade tea should be drinkable as koicha without any bitterness and be really smooth, which is only found in higher grade teas. Teas labeled for usucha use and the chakai, which would be really smooth and velvety as usucha, but probably not high enough quality to be made into koicha. Whereas keiko grade teas are drinkable as usucha, but not all that great, just enough to get by during a tea ceremony lesson. While I have said and will continue to say over and over again that there are no standards for growing or labeling matcha, there are some rough commonalities to be found in each of these categories. For example, for koicha grade matcha, this tea is always stone ground from hand-picked leaves from the first flush, usually from bushes that are grown shizen shitate, or naturally tailored, and grown under shell-style shading, which is higher quality and more expensive. Additionally, these teas are usually made using high-level cultivars, such as goko, asahi, samidori, or uji hikari. For example, Shoyo, which I'm drinking right now, ticks all of these boxes. For usucha grade teas, this is also only stone ground and first flush tea leaves, but these are usually a mix of hand picking and machine picking, and the bushes themselves might not be grown in the shizen shitate style, but in the tailored style called une shitate. I talked a little bit about the differences in these two styles of growing tea bushes in my video on how sencha is made, part one. On top of this, the usage grade tea is often direct shaded instead of being shelf shaded, which is cheaper, but also slightly lower quality. And the cultivars will often include a mix of higher grade cultivars, like those I mentioned earlier, blended into a base of more generic, standard quality cultivars, such as Okumidori or Yabukita. Lastly, Keiko grade matcha, or practice grade matcha, is also made from stone ground first flush tencha, but this will predominantly be mechanically harvested and the cultivars will mostly be the basic ones, mainly Yabukita, with a little bit of other cultivars sprinkled in for flavor. Of course, each producer will set their own boundaries for where one grade ends and another begins, and there's always overlap between them, even within a single producer's line of tea. On top of that, within one of these grades, there can also be a huge spectrum of price and quality. The cheapest koicha will be miles away from the most expensive and highest quality koicha. Here's a little graph. La, 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 la. All three of these tiers of matcha are used by tea ceremony practitioners, which means they would all be labeled as ceremonial grade, which again makes this term really meaningless because there's such a vast difference in quality and price from the cheapest and lowest quality keiko grade tea to the highest quality award-winning emperor recognized koicha grade tea. And having them both be called ceremonial grade is just dumb. Now, the last issue I have with this term, which I mentioned earlier, is a bit more of a personal one. As a tea ceremony practitioner myself, who is deeply interested and invested in carrying on this unique artistic legacy with as much reverence, respect, and accuracy as I can, it's really disappointing to see this art form be misrepresented, reduced, and commodified, especially by those who neither participate in Channel U 
nor care to learn about its culture or spread it. The continued use of the term ceremonial grade spreads misinformation both about the agricultural side of tea but also about the cultural and artistic side. I'm not saying that you have to be an expert in either of these fields to enjoy a bowl of tea, absolutely not, but you'd expect and at least hope that those who sell it have a better understanding and respect for the culture that they are interacting with. With that out of the way, let's take a quick look at the teas that fall outside of the ceremonial grade umbrella, because there's also quite a realm of quality here. This would include tea sold as matcha that is used in confectionaries, baking, lattes, etc. Some of this non-drinking grade tea or culinary grade tea is of a quality that's just under Keiko grade, and some of it is from mechanically ground fourth harvest powdered tea that really should not be sold as matcha. But sadly, there's no regulations for this. As I said, matcha is not regulated, but tencha is, and in theory, all matcha should be made from tencha, and under regulations, all tencha has to be shaded for a certain amount of time and picked from first flush leaves. So some of these teas that are sold as matcha are actually not matcha. This is because they were harvested too late in like the second, third, or fourth flush. They were not stone ground, but rather mechanically ground using a ball mill, or they weren't grown in Japan. All of these would technically not classify as tencha, and therefore they are not matcha. One last note about single origin teas that I've touched on a little bit earlier. Again, these are often labeled as ceremonial grade, but they're simply not the style that's served in the tea room. That's not to say they're not high quality. In fact, many single origin teas are of higher quality than those in the Usucha to Keiko range of blended teas. For example, our Kurarashi Sai Midori Matcha from Kumaen in Yame is of an extremely high quality, higher than our Uji no Mori. However, Uji no Mori has a poetic name and is blended to a more traditional flavor profile. Therefore, that tea is more suitable to be used in the tea room, but the single origin Sai Midori tea is not. Personally speaking, however, I would absolutely serve that tea in a Chanayu setting, but I'm the minority here. Unfortunately, the truth about matcha quality is complicated and not even linear. This tea comes in so many different styles, each with its own merits and considerations. Lumping all of these styles together under the umbrella term of ceremonial grade erases this variety, which instead should be experienced and appreciated. So the next time you're out shopping for matcha, keep in mind that ceremonial grade doesn't really signify quality. If the tea is not transparent about where it was grown, how it was grown, or how it was picked, what cultivars it was made from, etc., then the only way to tell if the tea is any good is to drink it. With time and experience, you should be able to tell what is good matcha and what is bad matcha. If you want some general guidelines on how to evaluate a freshly opened tin of matcha, let me know in the comments down below. But I'm also keen to know if you think the term ceremonial grade is meaningful or meaningless. Ooh. Be sure to give this video a like and to subscribe to see videos from us in the future. Thank you very much for watching and listening to my rant, and have a nice day. I need to make more tea.